Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. So hopefully you guys have readily prepared for receiving the Holy Spirit this week because today is Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So hopefully your hearts are on fire this week and you are ready to go evangelize the world. Hi guys, welcome back. This will be the last video for this He Is Risen Easter series. So we hope that you guys have enjoyed it. And today we're just gonna talk, obviously, a little bit more about the Holy Spirit and our relationship with the third person of the Trinity has impacted our lives personally. And we hope you enjoy it. What we're going to just really briefly talk about is the different ways that the Holy Spirit is manifested in our lives. So there's the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that were from Isaiah. Those help us to grow in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And then there is another type of gifts of the Spirit, which are the charisms or the charismatic gifts of the Spirit, which are the extraordinary gifts like praying in tongues or healing and prophecy um, that are meant to not only build up the person, but also to edify the church and the body of Christ. It's one of those things where you know without a doubt that God is present and that he is here and he's with you and you get this overwhelming sense of peace and reassurance. So we're given those gifts at our baptism, but it takes an active part on, on our part. Um, it takes an action of opening that gift like you would any gift. And so what are the ways that we can open the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Our, our hearts are a glass of milk and the Holy Spirit is chocolate or strawberry syrup pick your flavor and when you first pour it into the the glass of milk it's all at the bottom it's there but if you were to drink the milk like that you really wouldn't taste it and so you have to get a spoon and you gotta stir it up and that's the active part that we play when it comes to living with the holy spirit is you know we have to ask for that to be stirred up within us and ask for our hearts to be open to the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit's promptings. Being in a state of grace, you know, frequenting the sacraments of confession and of the Eucharist are the number one ways that we stay connected to, in a tune to the Holy Spirit. And then there are also other ways that we can stir up that gift within us, um, obviously asking for it because it's freely a given, but it's a grace that we must ask for, like Dalton said. Um, for me personally, the way that I really feel close to the Holy Spirit and really feel like it's stirring up the chocolate milk at the bottom of the cup within me is when I am doing intercessory prayer. I really do think God has given me a gift of prayer. And so when I start to pray and really just forget myself and put distractions aside and pray for other people, I really feel like the Holy Spirit is able to just come upon me in a, in a deeper way. The way that I feel most connected to the Holy Spirit is when God is asking me to step out of my comfort zone and I don't know what to expect, and I don't know what's coming. So what I do is I, in my heart, I pray for the Holy Spirit to lead me and to guide me and to show me what he wants me to do. And usually doors will open and close, not literally, but, you know, opportunities will be presented or not be presented or things that I thought were going to happen didn't happen. And all of that is the Holy Spirit. One thing I really do want to share with students is to not be afraid of the charismatic gifts. I think that that's something that we don't talk about a lot, but I think that a lot of times we're afraid to talk about or to ask for the charismatic gifts. But that is exactly what Jesus intended when he sent the Holy Spirit to the apostles and to us. He wants the Holy Spirit to come upon us in power so that we may be able to boldly share the good news and we may have signs and wonders follow us. We may get gifts that at first we thought were kind of crazy, but that's the beauty of being a disciple. And so I just would encourage you guys to not be afraid of the spiritual gifts. Ask him to stir up those gifts and reveal the gifts that he has given you. They're, they're tools that God gives us to grow his kingdom, to touch the hearts of other people. And I think that's the key point that maybe we forget sometimes. Things happen in our lives that are unexplainable. And these gifts at times are unexplainable. There's no other way. Um, there's no other explanation. It has to be the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. when you get to that point and you realize that, it's something that's really beautiful. And it just makes you want to dive into your faith a lot more because 
you start to see, you know, if God is doing this, what more can he do? There's so much more that we can learn and, and discuss. I would really encourage all of you to read these passages in the Bible on your own and just ask God where he wants to give you more of his spirit. And I know that the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to help us to become more like Jesus and to unite us with the Father. And so I pray that you guys can all experience the Holy Spirit's power in your lives in a new way this Pentecost. Again, if y'all have any questions at all or you'd like to talk more about the Holy Spirit and the gifts and how you can grow in the gifts of the Spirit, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or to Dalton. We would be more than happy to walk with you through that and share some of our personal experience and resources with you. So we are going to just close this time with the Come Holy Spirit prayer and just asking the Holy Spirit to come upon us and give us the gifts for the journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, send forth the heavenly radiance of your light. Come Father of the poor, come giver of gifts. Come light of the heart, greatest comforter, sweet guest of the soul, sweet consolation, in labor, rest, in heat, temperance, in tears, solace. O most blessed light, fill the inmost heart of your faithful. Without your grace, there is nothing in us, nothing that is not harmful. Cleanse what is unclean, water what is dry, heal what has been wounded, flex what is inflexible, warm what is chilled, correct what has gone astray, Give to your faithful, those who trust in you, the sevenfold gifts. Grant the reward of virtue, the deliverance of salvation, and our eternal joy. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we pray that you guys can continue to live in the light of the truth of the resurrection and um, just become the people that God has created you to be. The Easter celebration is much more than just a Sunday where you dress up in pink and purple and white and yellow and nice Easter colors. It's it's over a span of time. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching our videos. Thank you guys and we will see you soon. Bye. Surviving in quarantine. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. My hair is getting kind of long and um, I'm thinking of just buzzing it. What do you think? Just buzz cut. I have a lot. Care is a thing. It really is, Dalton. <laughs> if you guys don't have one of these, I think they're great. So. Can I use it helps a rock? With the wrinkles from all the family time. Can I get a stick or something from outside and just like? <laughs> no, this is made with rose gold cord. <laughs> um, Isn't this an intense cover? That's how you do Pentecost. Thank you guys for coming to not coming. Thank you guys for. Yay! That's a wrap, man. That's a wrap. Click.